What's up everybody, Brandon here from Garrison. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Bondi 5 from Hoka One One. Now for those of you watching this that just said, it's pronounced Bondi, you douche. It's not. It's pronounced Bondi, I promise. Now, this is also one of those reviews where I am not the person that reviewed it. This is actually Lori, our run manager, who reviewed this shoe. And we're going to be taking a look at what Hoka considers to be the most cushioned road shoe in their line. Now, before we get into reviewing the shoe, I want to ask you guys to do a couple things. Number one, if you've run in the Bondi 5 or the Bondi 5, then I would love to see your reviews. We want to see those. If you want us to publish what you thought of this shoe, just shoot it on over to info at gearist.com and put a little note down at the bottom that says, I give you guys permission to publish this review. By the way, here's my Facebook or my Twitter or my Instagram, whatever. We'd be happy to share those with you. The second thing is to please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. This is a huge help to us. We want you guys to sit out there and show your support, which so many of you have been. Big shout out to Hal who just bought a Gearist trucker hat, technical trucker hat, which you can go right over to facebook.com slash Gearist right now and buy one of those for yourself. That would help Gearist out as well. So once you've told us what you thought of the Bondi, once you subscribed, once you shared, once you've liked and all that kind of stuff, now is the time to get into the Bondi 5 review from Lori. Many people who are drawn to Hoka One One or Hoka One One, if you choose to pronounce it that way, are done so because they're looking for something that is cushy. Now, based on the way that something looks, a lot of those people think that because it's a maximalist looking shoe that there's a ton of cush. But like all shoe brands, even those with much, much less cush underfoot, much less midsole material, there are varying degrees of cushion within Hoka One One lineup, regardless of the fact that the majority of their shoes have a more maximalist profile. Now, with all that being said, the Bondi 5, the shoe we're taking a look at today, is, by Hoka's own admission, the most cushioned road shoe in their line. So let's start talking about it. As usual, we're going to start by taking a look at the outsole of the Bondi 5. And here, Hoka has left the midfoot, right in the middle of the shoe there, which you can see in this picture that I'm showing you guys. You can see that this is exposed R matte foam. Now, what we find in the forefoot and the rear foot are different types types of rubber. On the lateral heel, we've got more of a hard, more of a firm and high abrasion rubber compound, which is going to stand up to many people that might heel strike, especially in that lateral heel, thus wearing that area down a little more. In the remainder of the outsole, we find a more soft, a little bit of a blown rubber feeling rubber that's still going to add that durability, but at the same time is going to add some cushioning without making it a harsh ride. Now, depending on how you count them, the Bondi 5 has seven flex grooves on its outsole, which which you can see here. And interestingly, this is a lot of flex groove, especially for a shoe that has very little flex at all in it. At this point, Lori has about 100, 120 miles in the Bondi 5. And over those course of miles, she found that the durability was quite good and didn't show many signs of wear at all on the rubber. Now she wore these on road, on path, on sidewalk, and even some chip trail, which is kind of basically a path with, you know, like a dirt path, if you will. She found them to have great traction in wet and dry condition, but because of the fact that they are very smooth on the bottom. It's a very flat lug profile since it is, after all, a road shoe. She does question how they would handle in snow and ice. If you've got any experience with the Bondi 5 in snow and ice, we'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that in the comments down below. Now, as I mentioned at the opening of this review, many people are drawn to Hoka One One running shoes because of their maximalist look. All that cush underfoot, that apparent cush, both in appearance and actual material. Now, with stack heights of 31 millimeters in the heel and 27 millimeters of stack in the forefoot, we find a net drop of four millimeters in the shoe. So regardless of its maximalist pedigree, there is a little bit of that more minimalist profile coming into play. Now, despite the fact that there is the appearance of all this foam underfoot, it's interesting because that's not exactly where the foot sits. The foot actually sits about a half inch, depending on where you're looking at in the sidewall of the shoe, about a half inch down into the foam. With the foam of the midsole kind of wrapping up and around the foot, depending on what point you're at. Some places it's a little more sitting on top of the foam and back toward the heel and the midfoot there. It's sitting a little more down into the foam with that about half inch. Lori found herself really liking the looks of the Bondi 5, which is something we typically don't comment on. However, because of the paint scheme, the, the general colorway that appears on the midsole there, she 
said that it looks more like a more traditional running shoe as opposed to kind of some of those really stacked up and overblown Hoka profiles that we've seen in the past. Now, speaking of high stack in a running shoe, if you're somebody who's concerned about an ankle roll or something like that, like Lori's husband was, you really don't need to be. Because the profile of the midsole of the shoe and likewise the outsole is so much wider than the upper of the shoe, it's actually quite stable. One of the things that I commented on a second ago that Lori found is that the midsole of the shoe is very stiff. Now her being a more midfoot, forefoot, actually almost purely forefoot runner, she would like to see a little bit more flex in this shoe. But if you're looking for that stiffness, something that's gonna give you a little bit more pop, that's probably gonna be there in this. As we move into the upper, Lori thinks that this is actually a really good looking shoe. And while I don't really comment on style very much, I think it isn't bad looking either. The engineered mesh material, which makes up the bulk of this upper is overlaid by Hoka's 3D puff print frame. Now, while we can't exactly figure out where the puff part of this comes into play because it's pretty lay flat to the mesh upper there. The overlays are printed on by 3D printing and go in kind of a crisscrossing pattern in opposing directions in a series of lines across the shoe. The same 3D puff print frame goes up into the laces, which are traditionally placed eyelets where the lay flat laces run through. Internally, the shoe is very smooth with only a couple of seams, one where the material in the rear of the foot comes in about that last third, which we traditionally see in most shoes. And again, where the tongue attaches just above the vamp. So right at the bottom of the laces there. The nicely padded tongue is reinforced with more of that 3D printed on material and has a tongue loop to prevent lateral slide of the tongue while you're running. The rear of the shoe, right above the heel, kind of around the Achilles area, has a good amount of foam. Now, Lori likes more foam than I do personally in that area, but for her, this was super, super comfortable and prevented a lot of heel lift. So if that's something for you, this is certainly something to keep in mind. The heel counter in the shoe is semi-rigid and is actually backed up by some more of that foam to keep things in place and nicely formed to the foot. Lori was really impressed with the durability of the upper of the Bondi 5 and she really found it to be quite breathable. On top of that, everything looks pretty much the same as it did on day one with the exception of the obvious dirty things that you find on the bottom of a shoe. Moving on to fit, for Lori these fit exactly where she would expect them. She wears a size 9, her size 9 fit perfectly. Now, she did read a little bit of some customer feedback as well as some brand feedback saying that these are a touch wider than their predecessor, but since she did not run in those shoes, we have to just kind of take that as information that's out there. Starting at the rear of the shoe, she found that collar, as I mentioned a second ago, to have a good amount of foam to keep her narrow heels nice and locked down and really fitting into the shoe very well without feeling like they're swimming around in there. Then as she moves into the midfoot, she feels a really dialed fit and one that because of the lacing system can accommodate either a wider or a more narrow foot. Speaking of widths really quickly, this is available in wide widths, so definitely be sure you're checking that as well. Lori also found the forefoot, the toe box area in particular to be really great, allowing her entire foot and toes plenty of room for wiggle and splay. And she is somebody who has a very forefoot gait, so that is especially important to her. Now, as we start talking about the five, Lori comments that while the Bondi 5 is the most cushioned shoe in Hoka One One's line, and she will certainly say that there is quite a bit of cushioning here, she doesn't really feel like it's the most cushioned shoe from them that she's found. A lot of Lori's running in this was preparing for the Quad Rock 50 miler, and she found it to be a really great alternative with this much cushion, again, though it's not the most cushioned in their line in her opinion. She found that much cushioning underfoot to be a great substitute when you have to be on road, but would rather be on the softer, more inherent cush trail. Dirt and ground and things like that tend to be more cushioned underfoot and this is a good substitute. And in fact the majority of her long runs for that race, 20 miles and up by a lot, were done in this shoe. So it was really something that she was able to adapt to. But speaking of adaptation, out of the box because she felt they were pretty stiff. It did take a little bit of walking around for her to feel really comfortable and kind of get used to that feel on her foot. But once she did, it was something that she felt herself falling right into nicely. Now, while that stiffness did take some getting used to, she actually enjoyed a little bit of that pop that it provided with her. It's also a fairly lightweight shoe with the women's size seven coming in at 8.5 ounces and the men's size nine coming in at 10 ounces. Now, while there's certainly lighter shoes out there with this kind of stiffness and material underfoot, you're going to find something a little bit heavier like that. But again, for what it is with that much material, it actually keeps the weight down pretty nicely. And wrapping up the ride section, what Lori found is that she thinks that that amount of cushioning plus that amount of stiffness is more catering to somebody who's got a little bit more mass to their body. And Lori's pretty tiny. I mean, she's a, a pretty small woman, um, but somebody who's going to have a, enough weight to put torque into that stiffness of the shoe and really get that pop back from it, maybe somebody like my size might be able to take a little bit more advantage of that. Overall, Lori thinks 
thinks the Bondi 5 is a really good solid distance shoe. Now for her it wasn't exactly a life changer, but it is one of those things that when she was prepping for that Ultra and some other Ultra she's got coming up, including the Barclay Fall Classic, she finds herself reaching for that because it's a shoe that allows her to get the job done when she can't otherwise be in the terrain where she needs to be. She found it to be stiff, but still comfortable. And if she did have one complaint about it, it would be that she'd like to see a little bit more flexibility to it. And she mentions that if stiffness is kind of a hang up for you, there are plenty of shoes in the Hoka One One lineup, which will be able to have that same amount of cushioning, which in her opinion, again, isn't the most cushion, but more of that same amount of cushioning, but with a little bit more flex to it. Pricing of the Bondi 5 comes in at $150, which is definitely steep, but believe it or not, it falls right smack in the middle of Hoka's price range. So if you're a Hoka devotee or you're familiar with the brand at all, then you know they are running a little bit pricier, but I would encourage you to check those buy links down in the description below because what we try to do is find deals for you guys. And even if you're watching this three, four months after the fact, you're probably gonna be able to, for instance, click that Amazon banner link down there if you choose to, and if you click that, it's gonna be able to take you and show you the latest prices on the Bondi 5. So that's a great way to shop for it. Now guys, before we get into our question of the day, a couple things I wanna ask you to do. First, please check us out on YouTube and subscribe. You can click that little button, I think it's right over here. Click that little blue button that says Gearus. That will take you exactly where you need to subscribe. That means a lot to us and helps us out a ton. Also, share, like, and favorite this video. That means so much to us and once again, helps spread the love. Also, you just watched the review for the Hoka One One Bandai 5. Now, if you've got experience in this shoe that might be different than Lori's or supports Lori's conclusions or what have you, we'd like to hear about that. You can either leave it in the comments section down below or if you'd like us to publish a supplemental review on Gearist.com, just shoot an email to info at Gearist.com. We'd be happy to do that with your permission. Now, the last thing before I get to our question today is to please ask you to find us on all the socials. Just go to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, what have you. Search for Gearist. We're right there. Subscribe to us on all those things, follow, like, whatever, do it. We would love that. Now, for our question of the day, and that is, if you're in a shoe that's a more maximalist shoe like this, how much stiffness do you like? Do you like something that's going to be stiff where you've got to torque it? But the flip to that is it's gonna give you a little bit more pop. Or do you like a shoe that's gonna be more flexy and it's gonna ask your foot to do a little more? Let us know down in the comments section below. Guys, thank you so much once again for spending a few minutes with us today. It really means the world. Now, get out there, have fun, and we will see you next time.